this is expected. This is us venting out the liquid oxygen lines in, on the TE into the air, making sure that excess oxidizer isn't in the path of Falcon 9's plume at liftoff. At T minus one minute, Falcon 9 will go into startup. You'll hear that on the countdown net. This is when the vehicle stops listening to requests from the ground, other than an abort, of course, and instead is controlled by the flight computer from then on through launch. Now, as a reminder, if anyone calls a hold on the launch today, we will try again at a later date. Falcon 9 and the payload are currently tracking no issues. The weather is go, the winds are go, and the range is green for an on-time launch today. Now, with three minutes to go, let's listen in on the countdown nets. That back igniter purge has started. Stage one locks low and it's closed out. Stage two locks load is closed out. Falconize and start up. Stage two is pressing for flight. It's launch reactor on countdown one. We are go for launch. Gas closeouts are complete. Stage one, pressing for flight. T minus 15 seconds. And nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Lift off of the Falcon 9. Falcon 9 has cleared the tower and is now headed upward on its mission to sun-synchronous low-Earth orbit. Coming up, the rocket will throttle down for max Q, 
which, re reach maximum aerodynamic pressure. which represents the maximum aerodynamic stress on the rocket. We're now headed into a series of events that will occur in rapid succession. That's MECO, stage separation, and SES-1, or second engine start one. MECO is the shutdown of all nine first stage engines in preparation for stage separation, where stage two separates from stage one, and SES-1 is the ignition of the second stage engine. And back chill has begun. Following SES-1, we will turn our attention back to the returning first stage, which will relight three of its engines in a boost back burn to head back towards the drone ship. And then finally, we'll see ferried fairing deployment at T plus two minutes and 43 seconds. As mentioned earlier in this webcast, we're attempt attempting to recover the payload fairing. And while we will not have a live video feed of this attempt, we'll share updates as they become available. So in about 20 seconds, you'll hear the call out from Miko. Let's listen in. We have Miko. As you just saw, we had a successful main engine cutoff, stage separation, as well as ignition of that second stage engine. And there goes that fairing. And there you can see all 64 of those satellites on stage two headed to sun synchronous orbit. You will hear the call out for the boost back burn ending in a couple of seconds. That's where stage one's burn that brings it back in the direction of the drone ship. That burn will, that burn will cease. Stage two trajectory nominal. And we are hearing that the stage two trajectory is nominal and performing as desired. You can see those beautiful grid fins popping up on the left side on stage one as it makes its way back down to the drone ship. MVAC D's power is nominal. That burn is looking very good. Stage two, impact D engine continues to look good. Temperatures and chamber pressures remain nominal. And we have beautiful views of the Earth from both stages. So just a quick recap in case if you have just joined us. We just had a beautiful liftoff from Vandenberg Air Force Base, uh, our West Coast launch site in California, followed by amazing footage of stage separation, main engine cutoff first, then stage S separation. And we see the second engine um, there ignited and carrying our payloads into the proper orbit. Now on the left side of your screen there, you see our first stage, which is coming back down to planet Earth uh, as we're hoping to land it on our drone ship uh, this morning. So coming up in just a few seconds, we'll be initiating the re-entry burn. Uh, this is designed to slow the rocket down as it re-enters Earth's atmosphere. Then just a couple minutes later, we'll perform the final burn, also known as the landing burn, and that will decelerate the vehicle to a gentle landing atop of our drone ship. 
So there's the visual confirmation of that re-entry burn. This will last for another 10 seconds. Okay, so now that re-entry burn has ended, we have less than a minute until that third and final landing burn will happen followed by Stage a touchdown. One FTS has Now, as we uh, approach our first stage landing, I'd like to point out that we might lose video coverage uh, out there on our drone ship. There's lots of vibrations as the rocket is coming down towards it, so we might lose our satellite signal. Uh, if this is the case, we'll be sure to provide you status updates on that first stage as they become available. Uh, we're certainly excited to hear about it here in Hawthorne as, um, and across all of SpaceX as this is the third time, the first time that we have are trying to land us for a third time. So there we can see that final landing burn happening. We'll be looking for deployment of the landing legs here momentarily. drone ship just read the instructions which is currently out in the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> That's so great and the first the second stage is still continuing on with the primary mission though. We are uh, eight minutes and 32 seconds into flight and the second stage is still burning nominally. It's on a really good trajectory. Power is looking good. Chamber pressures are good and we're looking at 200,000 pounds of thrust in the vacuum of space with that engine. So the second engine cutoff, or SECO, that's where we're going to stop burning this engine because ideally Falcon 9 will be in its intended deployment orbit. orbit. That's coming up in about 50 seconds. As we mentioned earlier, we won't be able to show the deployments of the satellites today because this will be happening, uh, that will be taking place oh, over areas where we don't have ground station coverage. So unfortunately, we won't have any live video feed to provide. Um, because deployment won't be viewable, we will end our live webcast soon after the second engine cutoff. But please continue to follow along on SpaceX Twitter updates for payload deployment as they become available. All right, we should be expecting SECO, and there it is. Let's Seco. listen in for whether or not the orbit's good. And we have confirmation that stage two has reached a good orbit. This is the deployment orbit, and the next step over the course of the next 40 minutes or so is to separate the payloads from the second stage of Falcon 9. And with that, <laughs> we have reached the conclusion of our webcast today. Please continue to follow on on SpaceX Twitter for real-time updates on the rest of this mission, including oh, deployment of the satellites on board today. Thank you to our customer Spaceflight for entrusting us with today's launch, and to the United States Air Force's 30th Space Wing for range support. And a special thanks to the FCC, the NTIA, and NASA Spectrum Office for helping making today's flight possible. Be sure to continue to follow along with future SpaceX milestones. Uh, check out our website and social media feeds. 